Hello everybody. One of the most required features for Dialux Evo is the emergency lighting. We are very aware of this and this is why we started development some time ago. In the following minutes I would like to show you not only the current status but also how we approach a new development and which, which steps are required for a new software option in Dialux Evo. At DR we work with the agile development method called Scrum. With the Scrum, the team agrees on a set of rules which helps to divide the project into small and manageable subtasks. It works like this. The request for a product or a feature is brought to the team by a stakeholder. The product owner, that's me, tries to understand the requirements and divides them into small sub-developments that are written as stories in a product backlog. So in the backlog, we have a long list of subtasks that, taken together, meet the stakeholders' requirements. The team works in so-called sprints, in our case a two-week work interval. Together the team and the product owner fill in the sprint backlog, a list of stories that should be processed within a sprint and th that can be realistically achieved. The team meets daily and informs each other about progress and problems. At the end of the sprint there is ideally a solution for that story which in itself already represents progress for the user and can be accepted or rejected by him. At the same time, Scrum offers a forecast for the necessary development time. It is therefore important not only to know the general requirement of emergency lighting and to simply start programming. Rather, it is important to fu fully understand the requirement, which components it consists of, which functions are pr uh, particularly important and which are less. The most important thing is to understand the task that the planner wants to fulfill with this function. What goals the planner wants to achieve with emergency lighting and how we can support him in this task. Last year we invited some professional planners to show us their way to plan emergency lighting. We were really surprised at the number of different ways planners approach emergency lighting. Using real examples, the planner showed us in which steps the planning is carried out. Which data is available at the beginning? Which special features have to be considered? What is important in the dimensioning? Which luminaires are selected? Which strategies are used for the placement? What is necessary to validate the results? And how they are to be documented? We documented every single work step and all special requirements of all interview partners. Of course, we found a lot of similarities, but also numerous special solutions for individual interview partners. We have grouped and prioritized the requirements and analyzed special classes for their general acceptability. From this, we developed use cases, exemplary plannings from the user's point of view. Just creating such use cases provides a deeper understanding of the requirements and allows us to look at the software from the perspective of a planner. Not everything that appears logical and right to the developer is it also for, you th for the user. The use cases also helps to identify recurring tasks, which of course are given higher priority, and to identify deficits in the operating concepts. For example, we found that placing the luminaires in the emergency lighting is done in many iterative steps, making it as a task that is repeated over and over again during the planning. Placing luminaires and reworking their position is a central element of emergency lighting and requires a great deal of attention on the part of the developers. With the help of the use cases, it's possible to divide the individual planning steps into separate actions. These individual work steps can be described from the user's point of view. We recorded this, which resulted in a list of requirements for all the new subtasks of our new emergency lighting feature for the first time. To get a little bit more overview and order in this list, to identify meaningful interrelated functions, these tasks are created in a so-called story map. It is created together by the product owner and the developer team. Here related functions are plotted vertically, for example the calculation objects. The individual parts of the story map are formulated as a story from the user's point of view. At the same time, a technical analysis is carried out to identify relevant parts of the program and to estimate the effort. It is often found at this point that the task has not been described very well. 
what exactly should be implemented with this function, which mathematics is behind it in detail, and which boundary conditions are there and how should the software react on unexpected inputs. At this point, the task is often broken down into smaller subtasks. The aim is to describe the stories that can be developed into a meaningful and function, functioning subfunction within a sprint, a period of two weeks. In this way, we ensure that the, each single development step leads to an improvement for the user. And at the same time, we have the opportunity to test small, self-contained program parts, which noticeability increases the quality of the software. As an example, the placing of calculation object is described here. The technical requirements must be created in the software structure, our project kernel. In addition, we like, of course, to see the escape routes in our CID. And then there is the user interface. The needs for our escape routes are now fulfilled. Now we come to the individual actions. We want to create and edit the escape routes and set parameters. The escape route should snap at objects and other escape routes. If it penetrates a wall, it should be cut off so that no parts of the escape route lies within the wall or the neighboring room. Finally, it would be nice to see a preview in the CID while drawing because this provides a better orientation. As you can see, there are many small steps to take into account while creating escape routes. On the other hand, the story map can help us to play through a complete use case. From placing the calculation objects, via the calculation settings, the selection of suitable luminaires, the correct placement of the lights, matching luminaire properties, an optimization of the planning, calculating the exact results, and write up checking and outputting results so we can make a horizontal cut through the whole planning. The individual stories are then stored in our backlog where they are developed one after the other within a sprint. At the end of each sprint, there is a review in which the result of the sprint is presented to colleagues and feedback is obtained. Does the result correspond to the expectations and can the user understand it? The concept of the stories allows us to fine-tune these points and, if necessary, to improve parts of the development or to describe new requirements. So far, so good. Maybe you want to take a look at our current development. We are currently focusing on the development of the escape routes because these calculation surfaces are a central part of the emergency lighting. As you know it already from Dialux Evo, you find the calculation objects here behind this tab. Here you find the new tool for the emergency lighting. And of course we find here our escape route. Now it's quite easy to draw the new escape route directly in the CAD. Maybe from here to here to here to this position to here. With the new escape routes, it's also possible to snap on the escape route itself so we can create a close-up escape route, like this. It's also possible to change the width of the escape route. For example, we can change it to two meters, which is a little bit too big, or we can go back to a width of one meter. And of course, it's also possible to move the escape route at a single object through the scene, to rotate it, or just to change it and adjust the different elements of the escape route. As we know from the interviews, it's also very important to show results during the placement of luminaires. So we came to this conclusion. Whenever you place a luminaire, it's taken automatically to the light scene for the emergency lighting. In addition, it directly shows how the light of the luminaire itself will be displayed on calculation objects like the escape route. As you can see here, you directly receive a preview within isolines in our CAD window. It's also very fast, so if you move a luminaire through the scene, you automatically see how fast the isolines will change and how the results will be different. 
This gives us very good new possibilities to place luminaires. For example, if you've got one luminaire here and one luminaire here, and the red line would be 0, 0 0.5 lux, then you can move just a single luminaire so far that it hits the other red line. So we are quite sure that we have got now one lux here between the two luminaires. Well, that's all so fast. I hope you enjoy the emergency lighting coming soon.